Praise God. Well, welcome to our midweek service. Amen. Thank God for our Facebook family joining in with us. Praise God. And we're just excited. Amen. Is anybody excited tonight? Yeah. Any, glory to God. Amen. We're just so thankful for uh, the way we do our Wednesday service. We could get here at 6 o'clock, go right into the gym, have supper, and then come right in and eat spiritually. Amen. They ain't heard that in a while. Supper. Amen. <laughs> supper. Praise God. So we're just so thankful tonight for our Wednesday night service. Praise God. And what we normally do on Wednesday night, we get right into the word. Amen. Amen. So if you got your Bibles, go ahead and get your Bibles out and we're just going to have a word of prayer. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we just want to say thank you tonight, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for how you washed over us, how you kept us all throughout this day, Lord God. So much could have happened, Lord God, but you kept the enemy away. And Lord God, you kept us safe and brought us here together to be in your house, Lord God. And we're just praying right now, Lord God, that you uh, let your word go forth, Lord God, that you speak to us tonight, Father God, that you give us some encouragement, Lord God, that we could keep going. Amen. And Lord God, we just bless your holy name and give your name glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. Glory to God. So if you got your Bibles, we're going to go ahead and just get right into the word tonight. Praise God. We're going to go into some of our text scriptures tonight. Amen. And we're going to start with 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Praise God. Today was a good day. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So let's read our first text scripture. Amen. And, and in the word it says, what? Is that a question mark behind there? He said, what? Do know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Let's go into verse 20. For ye were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen? Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And I'm just so excited that this week, Monday started our what? Our Come on. We started our fast Monday. Praise God. Just a, a good time of getting closer to God. Amen. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Praise God. When we fast, we want to get closer to our Father. Praise God. Getting close to God is what it's all about when we're going through our fast. But the Bible said that our bodies is important. Amen. Our bodies is important because it is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's go to our, our second text scripture. Praise God. And we're going somewhere right now. We're just, just laying a good foundation. Amen. So we know, we know that our bodies is what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. I want somebody to say that to yourself. Say, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, that means something. Amen. That my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So I am important. Praise God. And in our second text scripture, we're going to go to 3 John chapter 2. Or 3 John 2. We'll put it like that. 3 John 2. 3 John and verse 2. All right. 3 John verse 2. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Amen? He said, I wish above all things that thou be in what? Health. That we be in health. Praise God. Our bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And in 3 John tells us that he wish above all things that we may prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I want to go to a, 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 a text Tonight, as we're, as we're getting, getting good into our fast now, praise God, we just stepped into Wednesday. Amen. Did anybody did, feel anything today? Yeah. yeah. Somebody said, yeah. <laughs> somebody said, I felt it Monday <laughs> around 12 o'clock. Amen. <laughs> right at 12, I felt it. Praise God. Well, let's go. Let's look at Daniel. Amen. Because normally at the beginning of the year, we, we, we do the Daniel fast. But let's look at Daniel. Because we said our bodies is the what? 
temple of the Holy Spirit. I, I tell you what, hold Daniel. Let's, let's, let's look real quick before we go to Daniel. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We went to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Now we're still in 1 Corinthians. We're going to look at chapter 3. Let's see what he said in chapter 3. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. We're just taking our time, laying a, a good foundation so that we can really understand that God wants us to prosper and be in health. Why? Because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And when we get the revelation of that, things start to change. Amen? So 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, praise God. He said, there you go again. He said, know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. He said, if any man, that was a big word right here, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. That's something to get excited about. Amen? That my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now let's go to Daniel. Let's look at Daniel. And as I was studying Daniel, it was some things that stood out to me that just didn't really stand out before. Amen? As I really got to studying, because when we we're going through our fast, that time that we would take normally to prepare those meals, we can spend that time now in the Word of God. Amen? And at the end of the day, as I said, that's what it's all about, getting closer to our Father. Praise God. So look at Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8. Praise God. Now, just give some context to this. And, and Daniel, they were taken captive. Amen? They were taken from their land. Praise God. King Nebuchadnezzar. Let, matter of fact, let's, let's, let's bag on up just a little bit as we lay in our foundation. Uh, let's look at verse 3. Daniel chapter 1, verse 3. And said, the king spake, not the Azaz, the master of the Enoch, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed, and the princes. So when they took captive, they want to take some of the children that, were, that they could get some benefit out of. We'll say it like that. Amen. So they took the, the, the children of Israel. They took some captive, but they, they picked certain ones. Verse 4 says, children whom there was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science. And such had the ability in them to stand in the king's palace whom they may teach the, the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. So they took them from their land, and now they finna get some benefits out of them. They finna send them through some training. Amen? Now just follow now. Just follow along where, where we're going with this. He said, and the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which the king drank, so, so nourish, nourishing them for how long? Three years. So they took them captive. They took the young men that they feel they can get some use out of, that were skillful, that, that, that they would be fit for the king's use, and they're going to train them. They're going to have to learn a new language. They're going to have to study. They, they, they just train them so they can fit right in with the rest of the guys. Amen? But he said that we're going to nourish them and give them the best food. We're going to feed them the king's food. Amen? Now, when they say the king's meat, that just simply means food. We don't know what type of food they have, but I know if it's the king's food, it had to be good because the king is going to eat the best. Amen. So he said we're going to feed them and get them trained up for how long? Three years. Three years. And after three years, they was going to present them before the king. Amen. And uh, verse 6 says, now among these were the children of, of Judah, da Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Az Azariah, unto whom the princes of the night gave their names. They, they changed their names. But let's look at verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat nor the wine which, the, which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the princes and the Enoch that he may not defile himself. Now, we just saw in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 
he said, don't defile the temple. Amen? And so Daniel said, I'm not going to do it. Amen? He was not going to defile himself. They changed his name. He had to learn a new language. But when it came down to him defiling his temple, that's where Daniel drew the line. Amen? Why? Because our bodies is the what? temple of the Holy Spirit. Just keep following with me. Let's go, let's stay right here in Daniel, but let's go to the verse 9. He said, now God brought, had brought Daniel into favor and, and tender love with the prince and the Enoch. Now verse, let's go to verse, let's say verse 11. Then Daniel said to Mezzanar, um, whom the prince and the Enoch had set over Daniel, uh, Hananiah, Hezekiah, Ishmael, now y'all please forgive me, I promise you I'll be pr pronouncing them wrong, and I'll be saying them names, and Jesus, I get them. He, all them Hebrew boys, amen? Now, <laughs> but let's look at verse 12. Let's look at verse 12. And he said, prove thy servant, I beseech thee, 10 days. Everybody say 10 days. 10 days. He said, prove thy servant, I beseech thee, 10 days, and let them give us pulse to eat, or what some say vegetables to eat, and water to drink. All right? So Daniel basically said, listen, I know y'all have given us a diet that we're supposed to eat for three years, all right? But I'm not going to defile myself. So i tell you what, just test us out for these 10 days, and I'm going to show you that we can withstand on just fruits, our, our vegetables, and water. Praise God. That's what Daniel told him, right? And so as you go through that, they did grant him what he requested. Praise God. But this is what he said. Let's look at verse 13. Then let our countenance be, our countenance or our appearance be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the, of, the, of the children that eat of the king's portion. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So after 10 days, just take a look at us and look at them and you be the judge. Everybody got me on that? Look at us and look at them after 10 days and you make your assumption and you, we can go from there. Praise God. All right, so let's keep, let's keep going. So he consented to them to this matter. So he said, all right, we'll give you your 10 days. We're going to see how you look. But before that, he said, listen, he was afraid to do it because he said, I'm not about to have you looking puny before the king. That's basically what he said. He said that I fear for my life because the king put me over y'all, and he, he assigned this to y'all. So if I go against the king's wishes, I could lose my life. Everybody got me on that? But he said, it's just 10 days, so we'll, we'll give you 10 days. Everybody got me on that? All right, at verse, verse, seven, verse 15, and at the end of 10 days, look out now, their appearance, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Somebody say 10 days can't do nothing. Well, I, I beg to differ. Amen? I beg to differ. I, but, but, but. But what Daniel did, he purposed in his heart that I'm not going to defile my temple. Everybody got me on that? Daniel had a revelation that my temple is important. Amen? And I'm not going to defile my temple with the portion of the king's meat. But after those 10 days, Daniel and those boys look way better than everybody else. Amen? Everybody got me on that? So when we're, when we're, when we're going through a fast, that time with the Lord makes a difference. Amen? That time with God makes a difference, but it starts with purposing in our heart. And sometimes I wonder, just thinking for myself, why is it so hard sometimes to fast? Has anybody ever experienced that? I'm talking about at the first smell of whatever it is, your stomach start doing backflips. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Your stomach start going crazy, but why is it so hard? But when you get a revelation that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, praise God, it makes a difference. Amen? I, I, let, let's keep going. It said, as for, as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill. They just continue to grow. They continue to grow in a strange land. Amen? They continue to progress in a strange land. But it said in verse 16, he said that, that after that was over with, then Mosar took away the portion of the king's meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. So for the next three years, glory to God, 
For the next three years, they ate vegetables and water. See, for the longest, I thought after 10 days, they did like I do. I don't know if y'all like me, but when my fast is over, I'll be 12. 12.01, there it is, right there. <laughs> there it is, right there. <laughs> now y'all can, y'all can say what you want about me, but I'm just being honest. My plate is already there, prepared. I have prepared a table for me, amen. I have already got it set, and at, at, at 12.01, is over, and I'm done. But after those 10 days, for the longest, I thought that was it. But then I, once I get to studying, I said, hold up. They weren't supposed to be before the king for three years. Now, how could Daniel, how could Daniel... Stay so focused for those three years. Everybody got me on that? How could he stay so focused for three years? But then you got to understand, if you think about the life of Daniel, Daniel and the Hebrew boys, they went through several challenges. Amen? Now, sometimes the enemy, well, always, the enemy comes for what? Steal, kill, and destroy. All right? So I'll say that was one of the first tests Daniel had to face was, was food. Now, where have I seen that before? Let's go to Genesis. That, that sounds so familiar. That sounds just like Satan, don't it? That sounds like Satan. He always try to go with you with, with food. Why did he always try with food? Why? We're going to look at this. Amen? He tried Daniel. Then y'all know that, that then the next thing they wanted Daniel to bow down. And, 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 and when they played the music, they had to bow down and worship. And Daniel said, we ain't doing it. They said, we're going to throw you in the fire furnace, but we ain't going to do it. Then, you know, they threw Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel went through so much, but it all started with, I'm going to test him and see if he's going to defile himself by eating the king's food. Amen? So let's go to Genesis. Praise God, because we're going somewhere. Amen? We want to stay, stay focused on our fast. Amen? We want to stay dedicated on our fast, because the enemy is always trying to trip us up. Amen? It seems like that one thing that you want is who they bring to work. Amen? They, that person that stopped by the store and got it for everybody. We got donuts and coffee. Now, you know I ain't eating no donuts and coffee. And why are you doing that? Amen? But look at Genesis. All right? in, in the beginning, in the beginning, Genesis 1.29, God delivered something to us. Amen? When God fashioned the body and as he was, as he was forming man, he, did, he delivered a diet to us. Amen? And that's, that's where it started. Genesis 1.29 God said, and God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree, which which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you. It should be for meat. As I mentioned, meat just means food. Amen. God said, this is going to be good for food for y'all. Amen. Now, let's look at uh, Genesis chapter two. Amen. Genesis chapter two. Like I said, we're just laying a foundation that we get the revelation that our bodies is important. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Praise God. Let's go on, go on down to chapter, or, or verse 15. Verse 15, the Lord said to Adam, and the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to do what? Dress it and to keep it. So he, God planted the garden and he set the man in the garden and told him to take care of the garden. Now let's keep reading. And the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. Glory to God. He said you can eat from any tree freely. Do y'all hear what I just said? Freely. I did some research. They say there's, there's thousands of fruits Thousands of fruits, thousands of vegetables, and Adam had this at his disposal that he can eat from freely. He can eat from it freely. He can just be walking and just grabbing stuff, just 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 tearing it up. All right, he can just eat freely, no harm. Just 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 eat freely. All right, but let's keep going. Let's keep going. And and what was that? Fifteen and sixteen, and God made no 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 no. We, we, we let's flip on over. There's 17, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt do what? Surely die. So now God told him, you can eat freely from everything. But this one tree, you can't eat from it. Everybody got me on that? This one thing, you can't eat from it. But thousands and thousands you can eat from freely, but just this one, don't test that one. 
Somebody say, that's the tithe. Don't touch that one right there. Don't touch that one right there. All right? Now let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Now here he come. Look, at, look, how, look how chapter 3 starts out. Now the serpent. Now the serpent. All right? Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? First of all, Satan don't play fair. He don't play fair at all because he comes for what? To what? Steal, kill, and destroy. They told me you don't play with the devil. They say you just don't play with him. So now here he come with Eve, and they say he did a, a play on words. But I think what Satan really wanted her to do is let's, let's, let's change your focus from the thousands to the one. That's what he wanted to do. Let's, matter of fact, let's just have a conversation about the thing that you can't have. Let's just talk about it. Now, let's just talk about it. You, they, 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 sometimes you're going to be at work this week and then, hey, did y'all know that the Krispy Kreme light changed? <laughs> Why are we even talking about Krispy Kreme? We don't even, this is not even a, a discussion that we need to have during this week. But, but, but here's what, this, what Satan did. He, he changed her focus. And let's focus on what you can't have. And that's what the enemy do. He makes us focus and think about now they're having a conversation on the thing that they're not supposed to even be. Why are we talking about this when we got thousands and thousands of things that we can have freely? But the enemy want to change your focus and let's focus on what you can't have. The one thing you can't have. Amen. He don't play fair at all. He said, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the tree of the, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the tree of, uh, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. Now, I wasn't there. None of us was there. But I can imagine. He said, come on, let's go over here and look at it. You talking about this one right here? You talking about this one? Do you smell that? Hmm. It smells good. Now they having a conversation right there at the thing they can't have. And ooh, and she smelled it. Mm, that's, that one's different from all the other ones. It is. And he said, you can't touch it? Really? Touch it. See what happened. Ooh, that feel nice. Huh? See, that's, that's how Satan do us. Amen? Because I'm bringing this back to us. Amen? Because Satan do us the same way. I remember I went to a, uh, like a nutritionist, and they did these tests and studies. And I thought I was doing good. I, I, I switched to brown rice, all right? And I started falling in love with brown rice, but I would start itching sometimes. And she said that there was something in it in the wheat or whatever that, that didn't fit with my body. And so I said, well, I need to stop it. But I had several bags at home that hadn't been cooked, and it just wasn't right to just throw them away. Why would I throw those away? So for the next few months, I'm just itching, all right? <laughs> I'm just itching. Why? Because I ate it anyway. Now, now, it took some time for me to start developing that. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Why am I still doing this when I know, I know it's going to make me break out and itch? When I got the revelation that, hold up, Tim, what are you doing? Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's my, this is the, the temple where the Holy Spirit resides. Amen. So I had to, as hard as it was, I had to get like Daniel and purpose within my heart that I'm not going to touch it no more. Amen? And it takes prayer. It, well, for me, it took prayer because sometimes it's hard prayer. Sometimes you go places and you're finding meals and, ooh, we got brown rice in this. <sighs> Give me strength, God. And that's sometimes when we're on our fast, as we're getting closer to God, as we're reading the word, sometimes I flesh wants to take over, but we have to control our flesh. Amen? So as we saw with Daniel, the first test, Satan tried him with food. Amen? And we go back to Adam. He tried Adam with what? Food. And after Jesus had fasted 40 days, what's the first thing Satan tried with him? Food. Why is Satan always using food? Food to get us. Amen? Because he knows sometimes our flesh wants what it wants. It wants what it wants. 
glory to God. I, I just sometimes I can remember it was certain things that I know my doctor told me don't touch, but it was 4th of July. Anybody ever just reason with yourself? You just sat there and just thought to yourself, well, technically, this is once a year, and you, you, you with family. It's just wrong to not eat with family. You just, you having a debate with yourself. Anybody ever been there before? And you deba debating back and forth. You say, you know what? Well, God, you know what? Just help me, Lord. And there it is. We just do all that type of stuff, and we just gone with it. Amen? But, but that's how the enemy does. Amen? But let's go to Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. Because God loves us. Amen? Amen? Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to destroy our bodies. Amen? He wants to destroy the body. And a lot of times he used the same old tactics. Amen? Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 2 and 11 said, at least we be ignorant of Satan devices. Now, we done seen several occasions where he's using the same old trick. Everybody got me on that? He's using the same old thing over and over. Why? Because he knows sometimes our flesh gets weak. Our flesh gets weak, and he knows, well, that's an easy gimme right there. Amen? But what we say, Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, Lord, Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you in a, an expected end. Amen? And this God talking through uh, in, in the book of Jeremiah saying, listen, I know the thoughts I have towards you. God wants us to have, a, have an abundant life. Amen? But if we go back a little bit further in Jeremiah 29, let's look at Jeremiah 29 and 5. When he was telling them, and here again, this is, uh, this is what was prophesied when they was going to be taken captive. Amen. Uh, it, it, when you look at that, he was, he was telling how Nebuchadnezzar was going to come take them captive. And that's what we pick up in Daniel where he took them captive. Everybody got everybody see where I'm going with that? But he said when they take you captive, he gave them some instructions. He said, build ye houses, dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruits that they produce. He said, get married, you have children. Why? God was trying to raise them up because he said, I know my thoughts towards you. I'm trying to take you somewhere. Amen? But if God is going to take us somewhere... He wants us to understand and get the revelation that your body is important. Amen? Why? Because our body is what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let's look at John 10.10. 10. John 10.10. 10. You say, he don't play fair, but I thank my God for Jesus. Amen? Because God will give us the strength we need when we need it. Amen? Sometimes when you feel like you can't go no further, you just start praying. Amen? And God will give you that strength you need when you feel like you're about to give up. Amen? Because it, as it says here in John 10 and 10, it said, The thief come not but for to, to, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you may have life. And that might have it more abundantly. God came to give us life. Jesus came to give us life, but Satan comes to steal from us. Why? Because Jesus paid for our healing. Amen? Jesus paid for our healing. Amen? Our healing is already paid for, but that ain't going to stop the enemy from trying to make us defile the temple. Amen? And there's one thing I know is everybody's different. He's going to tempt each and every one of us with something different. Amen? Now, I said, me, I like brown rice. Somebody else can say, man, you can keep your brown rice and green rice too because it don't, it, don't, it don't affect you. But what he's going to do, whatever it is that you have a weakness to, he's going to use that to try to trip you up. Amen? Why? Because he's trying to do what? Kill, steal, and to destroy. Amen? He wouldn't, wouldn't have it no other way. We just got through one of the worst pandemics, I think, of our lifetime. And it was attack on the what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Why? Because he's trying to destroy it. So we can't go out here and do the work of the ministry. It's a method to what this joker trying to do. Uh, I like how Minister Logan say, he's a fool. She shake her head with it too, a fool. He's a fool. 
But don't get tripped up by that fool. Because what he's using is stuff that affects you personally. Individually, something is affecting each and every one of us individually. So as we're going through this fast, God got blessings for us at the end of it. Now, that's one thing I learned. That when you go through a fast, at the end of the fast, it just seemed like God just said, here, you made it through. Amen. But the enemy wants you to get tripped up before you get there. Amen. It kind of reminded me of a young man in uh, Genesis. Uh, let, let's look at this real quick. When I saw this, I said, man, that ain't nothing but Satan. Uh, Genesis chapter 25. This is a familiar passage. Some of y'all know it. But when I saw this, I said, that is just like Satan, how he's trying to trip us up when we're doing our fast or whatever that thing may be. Uh, I know, like I mentioned, I told y'all that, that I was going through things and certain things the doctor told me not to do, not to have. And it seemed like I just still did it. I, ne I didn't have the revelation that my body is the temple, that, I, that it's important what I put in my body. Amen. I, had, I didn't, hadn't had that revelation, but when God showed me that it's just a trick of the enemy, ain't nothing more than he want is to see you sick, hurting, stress, aches. But Jesus said, I come that you may have an abundant life. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, like I said, we're, this is the third day on this fast. Amen. And I, I'm going to be honest. I've been staying true, and I've been, I've been feeling a little bit lighter. And I promise you, today, I needed every bit of energy I had. I went, went on, I was telling my wife about it. I went on a, uh, a project looking at uh, someone's house, and I came from their backyard, and out the corner of my eye, I saw a pit bull. And it wasn't sitting there either. That joker was running full speed ahead. What do y'all think I did? Do y'all think I did this? Stop in the name of Jesus. <laughs> That dog saw the back of my head because I was gone. <laughs> I jumped on, I was trying to jump on my truck, but it was a stack of tires in front of me. I, I grabbed that, I fell, and as soon as I fell, all I could see was that dog finna come get me. But I made so much commotion, I looked back, the dog just stopped like, is he all right? <laughs> but I needed every bit of energy I had today. But let's go uh, Genesis 25. Genesis 25, uh, verse 29. And as I was looking at this, this is Jacob and his brother Esau. All right? They say they were twins, all right? The Esau was the oldest, all right? And what came with being the oldest, you got this birthright. Everybody got me on that? And with the birthright, you got your father's inheritance. Now, all the kids got a little something, but that firstborn, oh, he got extra. So Esau held the birthright. But let's look what Esau did. Uh, verse 29, it says, Let's look at uh, 28. And Isaac loved Esau, but because he did eat the vision, he was a hunter. He was out in the woods. He, his dad loved him, but Jacob was a mama's boy. I'll put it like that. Rebecca loved Jacob. Uh, verse 30 said, And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Now, he had been out hunting all day. And when he got back to the house, he was hungry. I mean, he was hungry. He said, listen, man, I'm about to faint. I'm about to die. I'm so hungry. He said, man, give me some of that pottage. Give me some of that. Some, some translations say it was lentil soup, all right? So give me some of that soup, all right? And so let's look at uh, verse 30. And Esau said, feed me. We just read that. It was 31. And Jacob said, this is what Jacob said to him. He saw his brother hungry. He saw him hungry. He said, hey, you want some of this soup? You want some soup? You want some soup? I, I, he probably played with it a little bit. You want some soup? You want some of this soup? You know, I can imagine he playing with him now. You want some of this soup? Mmm, this, ooh, it's good, too. You sure you want some? By this time, he ready to fight, all right? He said, um, in verse 32, and Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to what? Die. Come on, man. I know you ate yesterday. You probably ate breakfast. So I know you ain't that hungry that you about to die. All right, but let's look what he said. He said, I'm at the point where I'm about to die. He said, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? And you have to stop and think like, man, do you know what you're saying right now? Yo, you, this is your father's inheritance. This is probably worth millions that's going to be given to you. And you saying, what is that to me? I'm about to die. I want some soup. Everybody follow me on that? 
And that's how sometimes we, we, listen, we go through our fast and like I say, God is like, he, he's waiting on us to get to the finish line. We don't want to be like Esau. So what's that to me? I'm hungry now. I'm trying to give us some encouragement so we can stay, stay strong during this week. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we can stay focused on what, the, what this week is all about is getting connected with our father. Amen. And I'm showing you so that we don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. He's been using this for, since the beginning. Amen. He tried it with Adam. Jesus, the second Adam, said it ain't, gonna, uh, it ain't going no further than this. Even after Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and the Bible said he was hungry. And the enemy came at his weakest moment. And I'm just telling y'all now, he's going to come to you <laughs> at your weakest moment this week. When our last day? Anybody know when our last day? See, some see, y'all got to think about it. Y'all ain't like me. I got it marked on the calendar right here. Boom, this is it. <laughs> I can tell you right then. But let's keep going. And then Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore to him. And he sold his birthright. To Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went on his way like ain't nothing even happened. And Esau despised his birthright. Esau gave away his birthright for what? Some lentil soup. Now, for us, it may not be lentil soup, but what is that thing? that the enemy is trying to use to trip you up. I'll, I'll put it like this. What is that thing that he's trying to steal, kill, and to destroy you with? Everybody follow me on that? Because there's a reason why he's coming. Because God got some place in you. Amen? If it wasn't nothing in you, he wouldn't be coming for you. Does that make sense? Why? Because he knows that that's the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he's trying to get you to defile the temple of the Holy Spirit. But we got to be like Daniel and say, I'm a purpose in my heart that I'm not going to let the enemy trip me up. Amen? I'm not going to let him do it. So let's read that real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. So you write that one down. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. My body, y'all say that with me. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, he said, at least Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not, what? Ignorant of his devices. So we've seen in several occasions tonight where sometimes the first thing he's going to try you with is your flesh. How strong are you? How much willpower do you have? How connected to God are you? When you call on God for strength, are you going to stay there to wait on him to come? Amen. Amen. Now, we're talking about this week we're doing our fast, but even after the fast, amen, that there may be some things that you just need to stay away from. Everybody got me on that? Sometimes you have to just say within yourself, I'm not going to do it. Uh, we learned Sunday that certain things you got to be intentional about. You got to be intentional about it. You say, I'm fighting for my health. Well, we got to be intentional about it. I'm fighting for my finances. We got to be what? intentional about it. Somebody say, well, I'm praying to God that, that my finance is going to improve. Well, you going to work? Nope. I'm just going to sit here and pray and God is going to turn some things around. Now, if somebody did that, you would say, what are you thinking? Am I right? It's the same way I'm believing God for my healing. Well, what have you changed? Huh? What do you mean? Am I supposed to change something? I'm supposed to just pray about it, right? We got to be intentional about it. Amen? Why? Because he come to do what? And destroy. Amen. Amen. Key tonight is don't lose focus. Don't lose your focus. Keep that in your heart that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Don't let Satan make you lose your focus on what you're doing this week. Amen. We're, we're on a fast. We're getting closer to God. We're, we're, we're getting into the word. And that's the, that's the good thing about it. When, 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 we, when we look at the pamphlet on what we're doing, we're eating a lot of fruit and a lot of vegetables. It don't take, it ain't hard to prepare that, amen? You just wash it and you go back and get some more word, amen? Amen? But if I can leave you with anything and just know, as he said in 2911, God got plans for you, amen? 
God got greatness in you. God has put the Holy Spirit in you, and God got a work for you to do. But we can't do it outside of our bodies. Amen? Amen? We got to have our bodies, and that's the main thing that the enemy is trying to mess up, trying to cause us to fall by the wayside. Amen? Praise God. All heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father God, we just want to say thank you tonight for your word that went forth, Lord God. And, Lord God, we're praying right now that anyone tonight, Lord God, that, that heard the word tonight, Lord God, that, that, that may say, God, give me strength tonight. Father God, there may be someone here tonight that have not made Jesus their Lord and Savior tonight, Lord God. Lord God, we're praying that tonight, Lord God, that they answer the call tonight, Father God. Father God, we're praying tonight, Lord God, that we don't be ignorant of any devices that the enemy have set for us, any traps that he have set for us. And Father God, we're just thanking you right now, Lord God, for the hearts that are here. And Lord God, we're, 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 we're just thanking you tonight, Lord God, for just being so good. And if anyone tonight, while well, heads are bowed, eyes are closed, want to make Jesus the Lord, the Bible says that Jesus died for us. He died on the cross. And if any man believe that he rose from the dead, Jesus will save him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you tonight. And we love you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Amen. I was looking through the audience and I saw that tonight is more of a believer's night. Amen. So I'm thankful that everyone came out tonight. Give yourselves a hand. Amen. <laughs> Give yourselves a hand. Now, do we have any first time guests in here tonight? I know it's a Wednesday. Like I said, normally it's a believer's night and it's all members, but it looked like, do we have any first time guests? We got one. Praise God. Praise God. I'll give her a hand. All right, now someone is giving you a, a pamphlet to just give you some more information about New Beginnings, amen? So you can fill that out and someone will get it from you or you put it in the offering basket, amen? At this time, we're calling it Opportunity to Prosper. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. It's Opportunity to Prosper. There now, those that, that, that are not here in person, those on Facebook Live, we got three ways that you can give. Amen? Uh, number one, you can give through PayPal. You get, that is newbeginningsclc.org, newbeginningsplurclc.org, or you can pay through Cash App, that, that's at New Beginnings CLC, or you can simply mail it in. And that address is P.O. Box 320-658. Flowood, Mississippi. Amen? So those are the three ways. Uh, fill out your offering envelope in its entirety. Praise God. God said that if you, if you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. The Bible said that God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Whose heart is in his giving. Praise God. So we're going to give cheerfully tonight. Knowing that God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. He said he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall be not enough room to receive it. Anybody want one of those blessings? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Uh, looks like y'all have filled everything out, so let us, let us pray. Father God, we want to say thank you right now, Lord God, for every offering that has been given, Lord God. All the tithes that have been given, Lord God. Right now, Lord God, we're praying a special uh, blessing over these offerings, Lord God. Lord God, we're praying that you multiply, that you send forth the harvest 100-fold on every seed that is sown tonight, Father God, that each person that gave tonight, Lord God, will be blessed. They'll get an unexpected blessing, Lord God, coming their way, Lord God. Why? Because they gave to your ministry, Lord God. They gave to your work. And we just thank you for your, for your faithfulness tonight, Father God. We thank you that you hear us and that you're going to perform exactly what we have asked. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, we're going to go through 